Hello and welcome. In this video, we will take a look at how to perform an ideal workflow for a SOC analyst using Exabeam. My name is Randy Gill. I'm a principal security strategist with Exabeam, and I will break down the memorable steps you should apply to your day to day. In this demo, I will walk you through the best practices you can apply immediately to your workflow, including launching an investigation from alert triage and then finishing with a bird's eye view of trends using dashboard visualizations. Upon logging into the Exabeam Security Operations platform, it is recommended that an analyst starts their day in alert triage. This is where I can quickly and diligently identify, prioritize, and respond to important security alerts. Let's start by looking at one of the alerts in my group. In this alert, I can see the vendor, which is CrowdStrike, the severity, medium, as well as any user and asset associated with the incident. Clicking on the alert, I can immediately see the user has also exceeded the risk threshold of 90 points of risk from advanced analytics, while his asset is not far behind. I also get a very useful summary of the anomalies that have triggered the risk. Let's click on the timeline and take a further look. In advanced analytics, I can see the alert triggered by CrowdStrike within this user's timeline. It appears to be while the user was in the VPN session and also that it is the first type of alert of this kind. Just above, I can see a file called barbarian.jar which ran for the first time just before this alert triggered. I can also confirm that he was risky on this day and thus notable. At this point, I'm going to raise a case for further investigation. Let's leave the priority for now and some notes for my, me and my team. I can now pivot to Case Manager, where I can review and investigate all cases that have been created within the Exabeam Security or Operations platform, and thus that are assigned to me or my team. I see the case at the top that I just created. As I can see, it has not only become notable based on our behavior analytics, but also has been assigned other incident types according to anomalies that have been noticed. I already have entities loaded into the case when I created it, which provides me with additional information around the users, assets, file names, and even domains collated as evidence for my investigation. Scrolling down, I can see further information associated with the case as well. Case Manager also allows me to review the tasks I need to carry out in order to triage and investigate the specific case simply giving me a checkbox list to seamlessly follow a workflow that has been assigned to my role. First of all, let's assign this case to myself. And now let's jump into understanding the context and risk for this user. We're now back in advanced analytics, where I can review some of the metadata associated with the events. I can also understand who the user is, where they're from, and other details as part of the context ingest. I can also pivot to the raw logs here. We can pre-populate the query and click on search. This takes me to the search application with a pre-populated search where I can review the raw logs for this specific timeline. However, as an analyst, I really want to take advantage of the automation and I'll remain in analytics. I can see updates occurring from a new location. First access to a web server and also a dev server. I can click on any event and see the trends for that particular event in, in its entirety. However, before I continue, I really want to check if this user has been notable before. I can use a calendar view to go back a few days, perhaps the 30th, and see what happened on that particular day. You see a failed logon and other first accesses to dev servers, not only for the user, but also for this particular group and also first access to GitHub repositories. Let's go back to the notable day. 
We see here access to a domain in China with a Zuma URL. The user nor anyone in the organization has ever visited an IP in China before. We also see a first execution of barbarian.jar for this user and the whole organization and for the peer group Salesforce, specifically running out of a temp folder. Although Frederick is a web developer, this is kind of suspicious since he has never executed this file before. And scrolling down, we also see VSS admin and VC edit being disabled. And these, as we know, are recovery tools. So now we have a story. Frederick assumed normal activity in various servers with the organization and also repositories. He visited a malicious Zuma domain host in China, which no one in his organization had done before. A payload dropped on his machine and triggered a security alert, which is where we started our investigation. The payload executed from a temp directory and various recovery options were disabled as a result. With this evidence, I can pivot back to my case and perhaps run an action or a playbook via the workbench. An example could be a threat or reputation lookup. Alternatively, a playbook to isolate his machine or put, perhaps detonate the malware in a sandbox or review this file against the threat intelligence and even escalate the case further. With this knowledge in hand, perhaps we want to create a dashboard to review trends over time of anomalous activity. In order to do this, I can use the dashboards app where I can visualize data according to my role, my requirements, and thus understand trends and risk within the organization. With this in mind, I've created an anomalies dashboard so I can review any anomalous behavior across the organization at any point in time. Thank you for watching this video on a day in the life of a stock analyst. Be sure to check out additional suggested resources and keep learning.